Hi there. During this session I'm going to be talking about and trying to explain the forces which impact a wire which is carrying current in a magnetic field. Hopefully by the end you'll be able to both predict the strength and the direction of the magnetic force on a wire. So, let's just get this into perspective. If I have, let me just introduce, a situation where I have a wire which in this case is carrying current out of the page. And that current flow, or carrying wire is placed in a magnetic field. The interaction of magnetic fields, because as we know, a magnetic field is produced by the flow of electricity anyway, causes a force to be exerted. And that force, in this case, will shoot the wire out of the magnetic field. So in this case, it will fire out to the left. Now, with some understanding of the situation, you should be able to make some predictions about that direction. And to do that, you're going to have to use Fleming's left-hand law. So we can use Fleming's hand signal, like this, and an appreciation of the factors which are involved. So the factors which are involved are going to be the direction of the magnetic field, the direction of the current, and the direction of the force. If we put these together, we can use your thumb to show the direction of the force, the first finger is the direction of the field, going from north to south, and the second finger is the direction of the current. So with that tool, you should be able to now make some predictions given a certain situation. So I will introduce the situation to you. Here we have an example. So the arrow on the wire shows the direction of the current. We've got our two magnets going north to south, so we should be able to recognize which direction the wire is going to be pushed. Make a prediction. Think about it. Yeah, And you should have worked out that the force is going to push the current down. Let's try a couple more examples here. Here's another situation. Stop. Think. Make your prediction. In that case, the force is going upwards. Two more trials just for you to check. Make a prediction in which direction you think the force is going to push the wire. There. Recognizing the field has been reversed in this situation. And my last example here. Again, you should be confident now about which direction the wire is going to move in using Fleming's left hand rule. And the wire is forced upwards. So that gives us some idea about the direction which the wire is going to be going in. We've also got to think about uh, the strength of the magnetic field. Now here, the strength of magnetic field is known as the magnetic flux density. Often because we're of magnetic uh, or situation where there's something, there's a magnetic attraction, is often caused by an interaction of several fields. This is a little bit more complicated in wording. But in thinking, we're just talking about the magnetic field strength. Obviously, in situations where there's more magnetic field lines, there's going to be greater magnetic field strength than in places when there's less magnetic field lines. Very similar to what we've seen with gravitational and electric fields. The units are Teslas or uh, Newtons per amp per meter. And that Newtons per amp per meter will give us some suggestion of how we're going to work out. And the symbol which we use is, is normally B. Okay. So joining that little bit of thinking, let's just try and apply that to a situation. So think what affects the force. The features which affect the force are uh, the force is proportional to the current. So the size of the current flowing. The force is proportional to the length of the conductor. And the force is also proportional to the magnetic field strength. So all of these things combine to tell us how strong the force is. So the force conduction on a wire is equal to the magnetic field strength times the strength of the current. So the magnetic field strength in Teslas, current in amps, length in meters. And there's also a sine theta trigonometric term just to recognize if the force and the, the force the magnetic field 
and the cone aren't at 90 degrees, then there's some compensation for the angle they're at. But that tells us in newtons how big the force is going to be acting on a wire. So that's a formula which you're going to be using. Now, this becomes useful, or particularly useful, um, why do we want wires to move in magnetic fields? Well, one of the crucial areas is in a motor, a simple DC motor. And what we have here is if we have current flowing through and around and into the situation between the north and south pole of a magnet, we can see down one side, because using Fleming's rule, there'll be a force going upwards, and down the other side, we have a force going downwards, and that will cause the coil to rotate and rotate and rotate, and that's the driving force of a simple DC motor. And that's all the thinking that you're going to need to have when considering um, the forces or electromagnetic forces on a wire.